so our question is partitioning problem so what it means is given a set of positive integers so divide the set into two subsets s1 and s2 which might have different number of elements such that sum of s1 minus sum of s2 so the difference between the sum of those those two subsets is minimum so this is basically optimization problem so we have to partition a set into two subsets so that the difference in their sums is minimum okay so how to do it so let's take one example so for, let's say the set is a is 3 1 1 2 2 1 so we have six elements here and we have to divide it into two sets s1 and s2 such that their difference of sums is minimum so we can take this is a trivial problem i can take this as the first subset 3 comma 1 comma 1 so their sum is 5 and second subset is 2 comma 2 comma 1 so that sum is also 5 so now sum of s1 minus sum of s2 is 0 which is the minimum that we can have but it's not always necessary that we can have two subsets that have the same sum so we have to minimize it basically so what can we do so again when we try to solve these kind of problems so of course one brute force algorithm i can find so brute force is what enumerate enumerate all 2 to the power of n subsets so for a set of n elements so set of n elements we will have 2 to the power of n subsets so i can try out all the subsets and basically i will take one set subset and the other subset which will be the other part of the set so let's say that the my set is s i take s1 then i will take s minus s1 as s2 so this will be s2 and then i compare these two and if i will enumerate their difference and finally i will see for which one of them the value is minimum and i will choose them but this is again my friends so this is o of 2 to the power of n so it is an exponential algorithm which is not very much preferred okay so that will work for smaller sets but not for bigger ones so what can we do again so now we need to check so is there any more efficient solution to this problem what can we do can we apply dynamic programming to it to solve some of the very tough problems so let's see can we apply dynamic programming so how to formulate that thing so two things that are required is first thing is optimal substructure so we have to ensure that whenever we are finding the optimal solution for a problem so it is formed from its optimal solution of sub problem so that is called optimal substructure and then another is over lapping sub problem okay so do we have over overlapping sub problems so if these two things are satisfied we can have a dynamic programming solution to it so what can we say so we can take make subsets of size what i can take no elements at all i can take one element two element three element till n element so that's what i can take so let's define something as and we can have some sum so let's say one thing more that we should have in the question is that okay we might say that okay all of them are positive integers and we know the maximum is maximum size of them is k k is the maximum among all 
a1 a2 a3 till a n okay so let's see so what happens now maximum sum that i can have is so it will be from 1 2 3 till it will be n k where k is the maximum value so all of them can have the maximum value so that sum the summation s is equal to if i say a of i i is equal to 1 to n so this can be maximum what so this is 2s is equal to n of k so this s is basically summation of a i by 2 okay so now what happens is we want to formulate some kind of recurrence relation okay so what can we do so let's define p i comma j it is one if a subset from a1 till a of i has sum of j okay so p i j is equal to 1 if a subset from a1 to a i that is the first i element so they sum to some value j so this is 1 so it means that okay we are solving for some subset so that is giving us kind of sub problems we are taking and we can now up apply both optimal substructure because we are having a recurrence relation we should try to form here so what recurrence relation i can form so let's see so can i write something pij in terms of pi minus 1 comma j or some lesser values of j so i have to basically write a recurrence relation so i can I write like pi comma j which means is if is one if a subset from the first ith element has sum of j so this will be equal to what this will be one so even if a subset from a1 to a i minus 1 it has some j because then i will not include the ith element so i can write if p i minus 1 comma j is equal to 1 so i it means what i already have from the first i minus 1 element itself i have a subset which sums to j so in that case even if i include the ith element basically i have till the ith element but i don't include it so i have a sum equal to j or otherwise what if or so or p of i minus 1 has sum of j minus a of i so what it means now i am so this one was ith element not included okay so ith element was not included here so it means so for the first i minus 1 element itself i have some subset that sums to j or p i j will be 1 even if i am including the ith element so in the sum there will be a reduction of a i so if from the first i minus 1 elements if i have a sum equal to j minus a i then I will include the ith element in it and it will become 1. So if this is equal to 1, then also pij will be 1. So here ith element is included. So it is included. And what we can write now in much precise way, we can write p i comma j is equal to max of p i minus 1 comma j p i minus 1 comma j minus a of i so this is kind of our relation 
so it tells basically this pij will be either zero or one so even so because there is a or here so even if one of them is one so i will have a one for pij okay and let's see some of the boundary values like so let's consider p of any i comma zero which means what i want a sum of zero so this is true for any i because i cannot choose any item and i can have a sum zero so this will always be one for all i i will have p i comma zero one and let's take p zero comma any j so it will be zero because i'm not i don't have any item to choose from and then i cannot make a sum so for all j okay and now so this was about the this is the most important relation the recurrence relation and we have to solve so what will happen so let's see a little bit more here i can vary from 1 to n i can have i as 1 2 3 till n and this one can be from 1 to maximum of n k but it can also be this is the maximum value but we can go from 1 to 2s where 2s is the summation of i is equal to 1 to n a of i so this one and this is more upper bound okay so what happens is but again this is so now what will be the order of our algorithm so it will be order so we have to calculate this matrix p i j p it will be n square k kind of thing okay or if we put the summation as 2s so it will be o of something like n into let the sum be capital n so something like this okay so but now this is not done so we are not done yet uh, what i have done is i have just now found out that okay p i j is one which implies that okay i have a subset from a1 to aj that sums ai which sums up to j okay but now what was our aim that do we have subsets s1 and s2 which has minimum absolute difference of the sum so now what i have to do i have to basically find out minimum of so basically i will start from the middle so we said that 2s is summation i is equal to 1 to n a of i okay so it means what i will start from the middle and i will just try to find out if there exists s minus i so 0 is less than equal to i is less than equal to s such that p of so if i can find that okay using all the elements if i can get something like s minus i is equal to 1 which means i am done okay so this tells that okay i will try out first which is the if i can divide it into two equal parts i will just have s and i will find out is there a subset that sums to half of the total sum if that is there then other part will also have the same sum so i'm done but if it is not the case i will subtract one which is the minimum so is there any set that has difference of 2s minus 2i something like that okay so we will make it clear by one example okay so let's take one example so let's see so i have an example of a is 5 1 2 1 okay so what happens here if we see that the sum is 2s is equal to 5 plus 1 plus 2 plus 1 which is 9 so it basically says that okay i can take s is equal to 4 or 5 whichever so if you take floor or ceiling so when i start to find that okay is there any set two subsets that have the almost same sum so of course here they cannot be same because the sum itself is non-integer so i cannot divide them equally so i will take now the sum i will start with four or let's say five so is there a sum five so five is there if i choose this one and four is there so this way 
so one will have a sum of four other will have a sum of five so minimum difference will be one and we cannot find any subset two subsets which has different sum than this okay so but how will we do it using our algorithm so let's say we, i have constructed this table for our so that was the data was five one two one but what i do is that i have constructed and this using this matrix B, I will show you how to do this. So one thing is sure that I will go from row wise. So I will complete the first row. So P1 comma J, I will try to do. Then when I'm complete with this one, so I will try with P2 comma J. And I will in one row, I will be going from left to right, which means I'm using increasing J so that I can use previous values of smaller sums. So let's calculate a few values which will help us. So I will calculate for you, let's say one, this one, let's say a few randomly, I will try to do. Okay, so three values I will try to solve. So first one is I will try to, and you have to understand that when I'm solving for this one, so only till the upper part and left part has been calculated and this part has not been calculated so let's say p2 comma 5 so this will be now based on our formula it will be max of p1 comma 5 p1 comma so a2 and a2 is what a2 is 1 so it means 1 comma 4 okay so it will be so p1 comma 5 is now 1 so this is 1 and p1 comma 4 was 0 so this will be max of this so it will be p2 comma 5 is 1 so we see it was a 1 here and we can see also p2 if i have two items and i have to make a 5 so i can just choose the first item so this was for the p2 comma 5 we can calculate for other values also which i have put by the red circle okay so let's try to calculate few more values just for your understanding so we will calculate let's say p 3 comma 7 so can is there a subset of the first three element that sums up to one so this is equal to max of p 2 comma 7 which means i is there a subset of just first two elements that sum up to seven then i will not include the third item but then also i will have a subset for which in the first three items i can have a subset that sums up to one or p two comma a of j minus a of three so j is here seven minus a three is five so now i see p two comma seven is zero and p2 comma 5 is 1 okay so this means this is also 1 because so p3 comma 7 is 1 and we can see that okay if i have three items so i can take the first and the third item to make the sum 7 so this is done let's take one this is a zero example which is not able to we are not able to construct so p3 comma 9 is max of p 2 comma 9 p 2 comma 9 minus a of 3 so 9 minus a of 3 is 7 so p 2 comma 7 is 0 p 2 comma 9 is 0 so both are 0 so this will also be 0 and that's what we get here so i hope now that you understand this uh, dynamic programming solution to partitioning an array into two halves such that their difference of sum is minimized okay so if you like this video please share this video with among your friends and please subscribe to my youtube channel and share about this channel with your friends thanks a lot